Hello there. Welcome to another midweek meditation. I am Reverend Devin, and this is a weekly meditation that I do for my churches in Hyde Park, Bakersfield, and Jeffersonville, Vermont. This is also a meditation that I do for anybody who's joining in over YouTube and is looking to nurture a progressive faith. If you're looking for a second opinion on how we can build up a loving faith within our lives, I hope that you like and subscribe, and please feel free to share these videos with anybody you feel called to. Hello, brothers and sisters. It's been a week. I'm back with you for the second week of Advent. I was with you last week because of the Thanksgiving holiday. Today, I'd like to talk to you all about this Advent season. Advent is a special time at the end of the year for Christians. It's the four weeks leading up to Christmas, and it is a time where we reflect upon the gifts that Jesus gives us through his life and through his ministry. We light four Advent candles, for those of you that are not aware, you know, these four purple candles, and then you have a, no, wait, it's not four, it's like three purples, then a pink, and then a white one. They simplify hope, peace, joy, and love. And so today we are on the week where we talk about peace, and in particular, what Christ's gift of peace looks like in our lives. And so today, I'd like to talk about that, and we'll talk about it through the context of Romans 15, which is a passage where Paul explains how he shares peace with the people that he ministers to. And so, let's get into the reading. The reading I would like to share with you all today comes from Romans 15, 4 through 13, and this is the Apostle Paul writing. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Jesus Christ, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles in him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So after reading this, you're probably thinking, Reb Dev, are you sure that you're on the right day? This seems to be more about hope than it is about peace. And while I do think that hope is an important element to peace, I think that this passage from Romans 15 does a good job of speaking to a common misconception that people of faith have when we talk about peace, and I think even everyday folks have when we are thinking about peace in the world. We tend to think of peace as a full package. That if you order peace in the mail, you should get peace on earth. And everything should be hunky-dory. Or you should get peace in your life. And it should be something meaningful and permanent and just there. I don't think that we tend to think of peace as a broken gift that you get in the mail. But that really is, in a lot of ways, what peace is. The gift that Jesus gives us of peace, I don't think is peace itself. I think that the gift of peace that Jesus gives us is an instruction booklet, or not even an instruction booklet, a guidebook. It's not even a guidebook. It's a online chat form with a whole bunch of opinions and you have to go through each one to figure out which one works in putting all the pieces back together. Peace comes to us in pieces. And if we aren't able to recognize that, then I think that we're gonna have a lot of 
problems when it comes to processing how this world can feel so broken and yet people still talk about peace let's just be peaceful with each other let's just do nonviolent protests let's just let's just let's just smoke a pipe together and and get along unfortunately i don't think that that can really address just how broken this world is and what Paul is trying to tell the Romans in this reading from Romans 15 is that in order for us to repair, put together peace on earth, we need to recognize that peace is for everybody, but also that peace needs to include everybody. So what the Apostle Paul is saying here in Romans 15 is you know, he's telling the Romans, look, I have the answer for you. I know how to bring peace to the world. And we need to keep in mind that the Apostle Paul is a man of boundless ego. And like many egomaniacs, of course, he thinks he has the answer to peace on earth. It just so happens, the reason I'm sharing this passage with you, is that I don't think his answer is that bad at all. The way in which Paul addresses the broken peace that we have in this world is by saying, the first step to creating peace is creating community. We need to all get on board this club of Christ. And I think another way we could phrase that is we all need to recognize that love is an important element if we are going to be able to live with one another on the same planet. And so we need to find a way to be able to accept that as far as God's concerned, we're all a part of the same family. And living together as a family is not always going to be a peaceful thing. Sometimes it's going to be a violent thing. Sometimes it's going to be a sad and painful thing to do. But if we are unwilling to build up that community, and build up a trust between our brothers and sisters within this world, despite how different we may be, despite the fact that many of us may hate each other. If we're unable to do that work, then we're not going to see peace come together, and peace will remain broken. I think that the reality of the world is you're going to find little pockets of peace within it. And if you can find those little pockets, it's good to share them. If you, you know, Share the pieces of peace. Those. They, they, they are sparkly and beautiful in their own way. But what Jesus Christ teaches us, and this is what Paul is saying, is how to pull those pieces together into a complete package and to repair the gift that God wants us all to have. And so when we reflect upon peace in the world, I think it is good for us to recognize that we're not going to get the fullness of peace as God intended it for us. We're going to have to learn to appreciate those little pockets of peace where we can find them. Thanksgiving was a good opportunity. It's a holiday where we throughout our entire nation come together with our families and try to have a meal together. And sometimes that is a wonderful thing where we all know how to get along and show love with one another. And sometimes it's a very dysfunctional thing, and we really wish that we didn't feel obligated to go and join our families on Thanksgiving. Sometimes, you know, it feels like that for me and my family. I do think that we need to recognize that, especially these holiday seasons, it is about the work and trying to repair relationships that we have in our lives. It's about also seeking out new relationships that we are building in our lives. And those type of community activities can help us make the world a little bit more of a better place. The entire premise of Thanksgiving, it reflects the reality of peace in the world in a way that is unfortunately all too common. My spiritual ancestors, the pilgrims, came to this country we're not surviving the winter. The Native Americans saved them. And how do the pilgrims repay them? Mass genocide. Stealing of land. It's 
not a happy story, but we choose to focus in on this pocket of peace right there at the beginning where everybody was able to get along. There is reasons for focusing on peace. And this week of Advent is a time where we do that to build within us an understanding of how God would like the world to be before we turn around and recognize the way that the world is. And so if we want to commit ourselves to being peaceful people, we need to recognize that we are peaceful people in a, a violent world. We need to recognize that we have parts of a whole gift that God wants us to have. And I think we also need to recognize that we are going to build that peace. We need to build that peace together with everybody and for everybody. It is a daunting task. But Paul, egomaniac that he was, and Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace that he was, both believe that it is something that we can do if we have hope. And so, as we enter into the second week of Advent, we light two purple candles. I hope you can find peace in your lives so that you can use that to build and share.